Hey, it's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Baofeng DR1801UV DMR radio, and we'll get to it right after this. Okay, the items you get in the box, you get the owner's manual, programming cable, battery, belt clip, wrist strap, antenna, the wall wart with the charger, earpiece and mic combo, and the radio. Okay, the menu for this radio is not too bad. I didn't have any problems trying to understand what they were saying. It comes with a lot of the usual stuff like a CTCSS table and a DCS table. It gives you some tech specs, troubleshooting guide. Let you know what all the items are in the menu. How to set up certain things like alarms, doing group calls, shows you the basic operations. But it was nice to see a manual that had pretty decent English, no issues here. Okay, the parts of the radio, starting with the left side, you have your push to talk. You have these two keys, one and two, and you can program those. On the top, you have your usual power and volume knob, indicator light for whether you're transmitting or receiving. You have an SOS button, antenna. On the right side, you have the speaker mic connection, which is the two-prong Kenwood. You can use this also for the programming cable. On the back, you have the battery. Just push this button to remove. They do give you serial number, FCC number. And on the front, you have your menu button, your VFO memory button, back button, channel A or B, direction button for when you're going through the menus, and your keypad. On the battery, they don't have the usual sticker. They've kind of, I guess, embossed the back of the battery here. And they say it's a 2200 milliamp hour battery. Okay, for the parts that are just like any other Baofeng radio. Go into menu, set, then you're gonna want radio set. And menu item number one, you have the CTCSS and DCS if you're doing something analog. You set your squelch, transmit power, talk around, your band, Timeout timer, and we want that at 120 seconds. Box. Some of these will pertain more to the DMR side of things. Backlight, I have it permanently off right now. It's easier to read with the camera. Lock your keypad and choose which zone you want once you get everything programmed in. Like for example, I have analog for some of my local repeaters up here on the Saddleback Mountain and the Santiago Mountain area. And then I have the digital side of it. The recording of this video, the radio is currently selling for $73.99 here on the Baofeng website. Some of the features that are showing that it has a 2200 milliamp hour battery. It's either has two power settings, one watt and five watt. Dual mode, dual time slot, CTCSS and DCS. Shows you that uh, they say it has a long range communication in open area. And in this picture, it looks like they're showing the Sahara Desert. You can go up to 6.2 miles in a community area, like a housing neighborhood, four miles. Urban area, 1.8 miles. They're saying it also has SMS function. And again, some of the specifications you have down here towards the bottom of the page. Storage channels, you have 1,024. Operating voltage, 7.4 volts DC. 
Frequency range on VHF 136 to 174 megahertz, UHF 400 to 470 megahertz, and again, the two power levels, 5 watt and 1 watt. And again, they show what comes in the box, although right here it does not say the programming cable comes in it, but they do show it in the picture. Before you start trying to program a DMR radio, one of the first things you're going to need is a radio ID. To get that, go to radioid.net, and in the top right corner, press on the Login Sign Up button. Then on the left side, click Sign Up, and this will bring you to the radio ID registration. Read all the rules, agree to it, and then register your account. Enter all the required information here. Tell them you're not a robot and create your account. In a couple days, you'll have a radio ID. To get the software for programming, in the Baofeng page, go to download. It'll take you to a page that gives you all the programming software for their radios. In this case, we're going to need DR1801UV. You're also going to need the drivers for the programming cable, and they have a separate one if you're using Windows 10. Unfortunately, you cannot do this with an Apple computer. Go ahead and download the software, and if you've lost or would just like a digital owner's manual, you can download that as well. Once you've got everything downloaded and installed, go ahead and hook the programming cable up to your radio and read from radio. It's going to ask you to choose the COM port you need, your baud rate. Once you've got everything set up, hit OK. And once everything's downloaded, it'll give you this menu on the left side. Give your device information, basic configurations. This is where you'll see where you'll put your radio ID number. You can also name your radio. You can choose how you want it set up. Like if you want your timeout timer, I have mine set for 120 seconds. If you want to use Vox, you can click on that. It gives you some different settings you can go through and use. This is for the intro screen when you first turn the radio on. You can choose which language you want. If you want simplified Chinese or English. It gives you your backlight time. I'm just going to leave mine on all the time for now. And you want it to show the channel number where you have it saved, the name of the repeater, or do you want just the frequency to show, in this case, the name. Then you can build some zones. I have Santiago for my analog and Santiago digital. When you input a frequency for it, you want to make sure you move it over to the zone channel. Once you have your zones and the way you create more zones appear on the create button and it just pops in there. You can choose the name you want. Say I want to use Saddleback Mountain. You can just set it all in there and you're all ready to go. Once you have your zones created, you have these fast messages you can use. I don't use them. Your contacts. I have Parrot in here, California, TAC 310, Southern California, and then Allstate. Now if I want to add another one, like say I want to talk to my son out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I hit Create Call Group, edit it, change it to Texas, it's a group call. And the code is 3148. And then you're all set. You can do scan lists. Your channels. For the analog, you'll input your transmit and receive frequency. Channel spacing, 25K. Put in your transmit CTCSS and or your receive. In this case, I don't need one of those. Once you've got it done, you hit OK and you're all set. 
Now say like the Santiago Parrot, you put in the frequency you want. And for the DMR channels, you're gonna be entering a lot of these depending on how many repeaters you wish to have or talk groups. You enter your transmit frequency, again, and your receive frequency. Your group that you're gonna be in, make sure you put the contact, which is parrot 9998. And once you've got everything in here, your receive group, again, hit OK. And you just repeat that each time for everything you have here that's digital. One of the problems I have with this software, and I don't know why, I've contacted Baofeng and they said you can't do it. Many of the other companies, you can download the entire radio ID contact list so that when somebody keys up and you're having a QSO with them, you can see who they are and what state they're from. But this one, in order to do that, you would have to go through and enter them all manually. And last that showed, that's a lot, 228,630. I, for one, am not going to enter that many IDs. Hopefully, Baofeng will change that. But for me, I don't like that at all. You have your receive group lists. This is where you saw like number four for Parrot. Now mind you, I am new at this. If there's anything I have not listed accurately, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Then you can choose when you go to VFO A and B, you can choose what channels you want or frequencies you want to show up right away. Once you've got everything set up the way you want it, you've got all your DMR channels and analog channels in there, you're going to go ahead and you're going to write it to the radio. Again, it's going to ask you to choose your COM port, your baud rate. Once everything's set up, go ahead and click OK. And then it'll tell you that it was successfully uploaded to the radio. And you're ready to go. Now I have found, I've used the downloading software for some of the other companies, and I find them much easier to use this one. I'm hoping, hoping that uh, Baofeng will improve this software so that it becomes a little easier to use for people, especially newbies. Okay, as we saw online, it says that the power rating is one watts for low and five watts for high. So we're gonna give that a quick try and see how well it works. We're gonna start with low power for the national calling frequency for 440. And it's showing a little over a half a watt for low power. Let's switch over to high power. And again, this is high power on the national calling frequency for 440. It looks like we got half of the power, they say, on the website. Now I'll switch up to the 2 meter national calling frequency. And again, we'll start on low. And we get about three tenths of a watt on low. For high, that's a little better. It's a little over four watts, but definitely not at the levels I think it should be or that they advertised. In closing, my opinions on this radio, would I buy it? I might buy the radio based on the price. It's not too bad. It is, in my opinion, a intro DMR radio. The one thing I do not like is the programming software. I don't like that I would have to enter over 200,000 radio IDs by hand. They need to come up with a way to upload it in mass, just like some of the other software programs do. I think it's a sturdy radio, seems to have pretty good battery life. They do need to work on its power output though. They're advertising one watt and five watts. And as we just saw, you don't get either one of those. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. 
And while you're here, check out one of these other videos. And again, thanks for watching.